What's up guys, Brown here with Shiny Tech Things where we tech things seriously. And on today's Tech Support Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to be able to not waste your time installing a whole bunch of Windows updates on Windows 10 if you're way far behind on doing so. And this is called a in-place upgrade and I'll show you how to do that. So first we're gonna come over and Google Windows Creation Tool. You'll see it has a link here for downloading Windows 10 disk image ISO file right here from Microsoft. And if we come down to Create Windows, 10 installation media, we can click on download tool now. So we'll go ahead and download this and you'll notice it has the 21H2, which is the current latest build of Windows 10. We'll hit save. Once it's saved, we'll go ahead and open it. Now while this is loading, I'm gonna let you know that since I am running Windows 11, I won't be performing this directly on my system, but the process will be exactly how I'm explaining it. So go ahead and click on accept. This might take a little bit of time. And then we want to click on create installation media, USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO file for another PC. Uh, you can tell it to upgrade this PC now. However, if you do it this way, then if you ever need to do it on any other systems, you already have the ISO file that you can just put right onto a thumb drive. Go ahead and click next. And if you're only going to be doing it on a 64-bit system, then you can just leave it. Otherwise, you can uncheck the box, click on it, and select either 32-bit, 64-bit, or both. I'll just keep it as 64-bit and then click on next. Now I'm going to click on ISO file and hit next. So I'm going to name this Windows 10 21 H2 just so I know what version of Windows 10 it is and click save. Now I'll click on next. Here we pretty much just hurry up and wait. With the magic of video editing, I'm going to cut right through this just like this. Okay, so it went ahead and finished downloading and we now have the ISO image in our document. All right, so I went ahead and just built a Windows 10 VM real quick in Hyper-V. Uh, I have a link that I'll leave here somewhere on the screen on how to do that on Windows 11. If you have Windows Professional, then Hyper-V is built in for free. You just have to enable it. The process is also the same on Windows 10 as well. But let's go ahead and just jump back and show you how this works. Hold down the Windows key and press the letter R for run and type in Winver, which will provide the Windows version that you are running. Hit enter. And we can see this version that I installed into a VM is 21H1. And then there's the build number. So this is the ISO image that was created. I'm going to go ahead and just double click on it. And then it shows up as a virtual CD-ROM. And then double click on setup. You just hit next. It's going to check for updates if it is connected online. Now I will just minimize this because it's running in the background. Now I will go ahead and click on accept. And it's going to get updates online. So it'll be pretty much all up to date for the most part right after running this. Now while this this is running, I want to talk about a couple other things. So where this is most useful is when you have a pre-existing computer that is really behind on updates. So by doing this, you don't have to go through the process of installing multiple sets of updates and rebooting. You pretty much just go through this one process and maybe check for one other set of updates and you should be good to go. This is the screen where you want to select if you want to keep your files and apps. And by default, it is selected already. But if we click on this, you could just opt to keep your personal files only or nothing, where it'll just wipe everything. Now you might be asking, why would you want to just keep your files and not programs? It's a great question. Let's say that your computer has not been running so well lately, and you think that there might be some kind of software issue, then this will basically just keep your data itself inside of your personal libraries. So like your documents, music, and pictures, but I would still highly recommend backing them up before doing any type of system upgrade, just in case if something goes wrong along the way. Now, if your system is really messed up and you just don't care about the data, you could just click on nothing and let it just reinstall. But we're going to keep personal files and apps and hit next, we're going to check for updates. Now that that has finished, we will go ahead and click the install button. Now you just hurry up and wait. Now, since we're waiting, I just want to shout out to today's video sponsor. It's the most important one of all, it's you the viewer. So go ahead and make sure you slap that like button so that this video can also be promoted by YouTube to other viewers like yourself that may benefit from it. And if you are into tech support videos or more technical videos, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the beat. Now let's watch some more paint dry. Now 
Now, since this might take a long time, I'm going to use the magic of movie editing to jump right through it. Are you ready? Let's go. So now it is still installing and it will be rebooting a couple of times on its own. So just be patient and wait for it to complete. Now it's very crucial that you are patient during this process because if you lose your patience and say you just reboot the system or if you lose power, then you might end up having to rebuild your system. And if you didn't already take a backup of any critical data, you might have also lost your data as well. So it's still installing updates here and you just got to be patient and wait for it to finish installing. So now it is finishing updating everything and once it comes up we'll go ahead and take a look at the version of Windows that is installed on it and it should be the latest version. And you just saved all that time instead of having to install updates and reboot and wait over and over again just by doing an in-place upgrade. Cool. Do you remember how to bring up the Windows version? I'll give you a hint. You hold down the Windows key and press the letter R and it should show up in your history. Here we go. It is version 21 H2. Now we're going to check for updates just in case. So click on start then settings then click on update and security and check for updates. It looks like it does have a couple of updates, but it is a lot less than if you went ahead and manually installed all the updates up until this point, especially if it's been years since you have installed all the major updates on Windows 10. Now, if there are any options to download and install, you can go ahead and click on them and wait for those to install as well. So now that you're fully updated, you wanna do a couple other things after you make sure that all of your software is functioning properly. Now we can see the Windows 10 ISO file on the desktop and it takes up over four gigabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Empty the recycle bin. So if we open up the Explorer window and then come to this PC and the C drive, you will see that there is a Windows and Windows old folder. Now you can't just delete it here. You need to do it properly. We'll click on start and then type in disk cleanup Click on that. Now we click on clean up system files. It'll take a little bit of time for it to run. Now you can see the Windows Update Cleanup can be selected here and that frees up 2.93 gigs. And I'm gonna go ahead and just check everything else here and clean it all up. And then here is the previous Windows installations. That's 14.4 gigs. So the total amount of space that it will reclaim is almost 22 gigabytes. That is a decent amount of space. So we want to go ahead and clean that up now and free up as much space as we can on the drive. Click OK and then delete files. Now it might take a little while for it to run. Now it is prompting us if you clean up the previous Windows installations or temporary installation files, you will no longer be able to restore the machine back to the previous version of Windows. Are you sure you want to do this? Now since everything is running fine on my machine, I'm going to go ahead and click yes. There's 89.1 gigs free on the VM. And once this finishes, it should have about 20 gigs more space available. While this is running, go ahead and let me know how your machine is running down below. And if you have any other technical questions that I may answer for you. Now this can take quite some time to run, so be patient with it, or maybe go take a break and go do something else and come back. Now it is cleaning up the Windows upgrade log files. All right, it finally finished. So now I'm opening up Explorer again, and now we have 103 gigs available. 